for that ministry of reconciliation. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says this. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, has committed and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though Christ were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now, being reconciled to God is more than just evangelism. Okay? It's more than just being saved. Reconciliation is a process that allows us to stand before God with the confidence of knowing that He hears our prayers and answers them. Now this is where the Lord has been in the last few weeks. He's been on our prayer lives. You know, I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I don't, I don't know if it hit really home, but answered prayers are the visible evidence that God is working in your life. That's the visible. When I look behind me, I look before me for things that have not, that I cannot see. So I, look, I look ahead of me for those things. Faith, the substance, things hoped for. Okay? What hope that's seen is not hope. But I look behind me at all the things that God does, has done in my life. I look behind me at all the answered prayers that I have. And it's visible evidence that God exists. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier, a couple of days ago I got home from a ministry thing and a young couple came over here and uh, they want to get married here in a couple of weeks. They want me to do the wedding for them and uh, it, some of the LDOs here. And uh, they looked at me with such a look as though what they had done the God could never remove that from them. And, and when I look at them, and when I look at the lost, because there has been a lot of lost people that I've been ministering to in the last, I mean, several hundred just in the last two weeks. When I look into their eyes, what I see is I see that we have put off, we as ambassadors of Christ somehow have put off the fact that God cannot, God cannot remove what's going on with God, God keeps, somehow He can forgive us, but He can't forgive them. And what I mean by that is most people that I meet in our generation somehow believe, they look at Randy and they say, I see Randy, he's a good person. I believe God could save Randy. I believe God could heal Randy. I believe that God could bring him to himself, but not me. And I see that so much that it's running rampant in our generation, which is, I know God would do it for them, but He would not do that for me. Let me tell you something. When I began to tell my story in here, where I came from, it, it began to change their perception of who God is. Somehow, sometimes when we get saved, Somehow we think, we look at other people and we think that God can't do for them or something. Somehow they're worse off than we were. And, and God can't bring them to the point where He's brought us. But that's not true, is it? Because the gospel is universal. No matter who you are. No matter where you're at, no matter who you are, the gospel is universal. God wants to bring all of us into an experience with Him. It's universal. And so, with all of that having been said, I'm hearing this message towards that. Being reconciled to God. Understanding what it takes to do business with God. Okay? Understanding what it means to have my prayer life answered. Where I can look behind me. See, because they're just starting their Christian life. You may be just starting. You may have been there a long time. But I can look behind me at all the prayers that God has answered for me personally. I'm an answered prayer. I'm an answered prayer for my mom. I'm an answered prayer. You see, I'm an answered prayer myself. But as I look behind me, I see all the things that God has done and that becomes the visible evidence that God is working in my life. Now, most of us, when we pray, we want to be able to pray with a high percentage rate or a higher percentage rate than what we had the, the last year that we prayed. What I mean by that is just like if um, 
Harvey were to go to the, the shooting range and he shot at the target and he only hit the target one out of 20 times, you probably want to get a little better at that. Right? You want to get a little better than that. Uh, if, if, especially if you're going to be a state trooper like he is, you, you want to get better than hitting the target one out of 20 times. You want to hit that target every time you shoot it. And you know, I'm not um, being idealistic of thinking that everything that we pray will get answered because I know better than that. I'm, I'm not giving you a bunch of ideology. I'm trying to say that I want to give you some tips this morning, some things that will help you improve you doing business with God. The transactions that take place, because that's what, prayer, that's what your prayer life is all about. Ask of me. Okay? Ask. That's what God's saying. God's saying, hey, if you have not because you ask not all these, you know, you think about all these scriptures that go along with asking. God wants us to ask Him. Okay? God wants us to pray. He wants us to ask Him. And those prayers are supposed to be answered. Now, now, now get that. You're praying. Now, all the prayers you pray may not be the God they pray. You know, they may be not God's will or they may be your own service. I don't know. But, but what I'm saying is when you pray, you expect that prayer to be answered, right? I mean, you expect your prayers to be answered. That's what we want to address today. Being reconciled with God has more to it than just being saved. Reconciliation is a process that allows us to stand before God in the confidence of knowing that He hears our prayers and answers them. It's more than just evangelism, this word reconciliation. And he uses it in this passage. It's more than just evangelism. Because when we think about being reconciled to God, we think about evangelism. But the truth is that what Paul's talking to the church at Corinth here, he's talking to them about being reconciled. And this, this term reconciled means to be in harmony with God. To be in sync with God. Okay? When If I take my... If I take uh, that clock on the wall and I set it with my clock on my phone, then I'm syncing them together, right? All right, boys, sync your watches. You know, on the old TV shows, you know, that was dog that playing the like, okay, see. Getting in sync with God is a big deal. That's part of me. That is what being reconciled to God means. And there are steps and a process that it takes to be in step with God, to be in tune, to be in harmony with God is not that easy. True. Most of us understand that it's not that easy to walk in the Spirit is what the Bible calls it. To be there in that place where everything you pray and everywhere you're at. Now Jesus did, didn't He? Jesus never went anywhere, nor did He pray anything that was amiss. And everywhere He stepped His foot was where the Holy Spirit wanted Him to. But there are days when I wake up, when you wake up, when we miss it, don't we? There's sometimes I go for an hour or so in the morning and I realize... You know what? I need to stop and back up. I'm out of sync. Some just don't feel. Some, you know, not that I have to feel good every day, but I'm saying something feels within inside of me that I need to stop and see what's going on. Well, where are you at? In other words, where, where are you doing? Where are you at? How can I get back in sync with you? And and the ministry of reconciliation has to do with taking someone and putting them in the place where they're back in sync with God. Okay. You understand that, right? I'm kind of getting that clear what the term reconciliation means. It means to look at someone and the, the ministry of reconciliation is where I look at someone or you look at someone and you put them back in the sink with God. Okay? Now let's start off with talking about this. There's, there's three things that have to take place. I'll say it like this. The word for reconciling this passage is also a term that is used for exchanging money. And that's where I want to come with this this morning. This term reconcile has to do with the exchange of money. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? It's just like taking American dollars and exchanging them into Nicaraguan dollars or yen or euros or whatever the currency may be. What you are doing here when you are being reconciled is you are exchanging one thing for another. Is that true? You exchanged your old life. For a new life in Christ. Because I'm kind of, you are following that, right? So the exchange that's taking place would just like would be just like if I went to Nicaragua and I exchange, and I've done that. Mm -hmm. Take hundred dollars and exchange it for they call them I think they call them cordobas down there. And uh, the last time we were down there, me and we, we took and uh, it was an open air market, and then Roger took us down there and we went in this open air market. And this guy, they're all up there playing dice on top of a bunch of burlap feed sacks and they're playing dice 